Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. This is the second video in the Modern Physics uh, series, and we're going to be introducing the photoelectric effect. So this um, picture you see in front of you is a simulation I'm going to play in a second, which is a very similar setup to um, two scientists built this, Stolotov, uh, a Russian, and von Leonard, I think he was German, in the late 1800s, and they did it independently of each other, and they had their own setup, but basically the same. So in the simulation here, I've run it, I've got the same setup here. All we really need to see is we have a lamp um, that we can turn on the brightness, that's the intensity, and at the moment it's in UV colour. Um, and when I put the lamp on this metal plate, electrons fly off it. And you see they fly off and they, they head towards the other plate. That's basically it for the photoelectric effect. Light turns on, electrons fly off, they flow around and I can measure the amount of electrons in the current. Um, we'll get to the battery in, in another video. I can change the intensity or the brightness and I can change the colour as well of the lamp. So for now all you need to know is that light hits the metal and electrons are able to escape. So we first have to understand what's happening with metals. So this will be something similar to what you've come across in chemistry before. But a metal is just basically made up of a lattice of atoms. So a lattice is how the atoms are arranged. Um, and within that, what you have is the outer electrons from each atom are free to move around. Um, and so we call those electrons free electrons or delocalized electrons. Now, even though they're free to move around within the lattice that's within the metal, the electrons can't escape out of the metal. If they were to escape out of the metal, um, they're negative. When they leave, the metal will become slightly positive and they'd be attracted back towards each other and the electron would just be attracted back in and, and captured by the, um, the metal. So for in order to, 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 to escape, it needs extra energy, just like a rocket needs extra energy to be able to escape from the Earth. The light, the lamp, supplies that energy. So the electrons can escape if they absorb that energy from the lamp um, and they've got enough of it, then they can escape the metal. So that's the photoelectric effect. Photo meaning uh, light, and electric meaning electron, photoelectric effect. So as always when I talk about energy, I like to describe energy using a Lowell chart. So here we have the electron that escaped from the metal lattice, so those are our systems. Um, it's easy to talk about what type of energy it has after the interaction, so after the electrons escaped, and it's escaped and moving, so it has kinetic energy. Where did it get that energy from? Well it got it from the light. So I've got five bars of energy coming in, and it has two bars of kinetic energy. It doesn't seem to balance. So this is going to be a bit of a weird step, but believe me, it makes sense. We say that when the electron's still in the metal, it has negative electric energy. Electric energy can be defined just like gravitational energy. With gravitational energy, you can choose the zero point wherever you want. So if you have a ball that you care about as your system and you're throwing it up, you might say the zero point was in your hand. So when the ball goes up in the air, um, it has more and more positive energy. When it gets back to your hand, it's back to zero energy. If it fell below your hand, then it has negative gravitational energy. The same thing kind of happens here. Scientists like to talk about um, the zero point after the electron has left the lattice. So they like to call that zero energy. So before, when it was still in the lattice, um, it starts off at negative. And the metaphor scientists use, so not just me, but scientists every day when they're talking about these things, they use um, a well, a well like a hole in the ground that has water in it. So it's, it's like a hole in the ground. And so this negative energy here, they call it a, um, an energy well. And so the metaphor is you're thinking about the electron is down in a well. It needs some energy to be able to lift it out of that well to be able to be free. So the energy, um, the electric energy or negative energy, it starts with, is given the symbol negative phi because it's negative energy. We add light energy and that gives us the kinetic energy. That balances now because we've got negative three energies plus positive five and that equals positive two. So put them together and we have this equation. The name we give for the energy well, the negative energy that it started with when it was trapped in the, um, the metal, is called the work function. Um, it's a property of the metal, so different metals have different work functions. Um, different metals have different depth wells, so that means it's, it's easier or harder for an electron to escape from different types of metals. Um, so yeah, it's how, how 
hard it is for that electron to escape. So this is a summary. We've just described the experiment. Uh, in the next two videos, I'm going to talk about um, the surprising results of the experiment and the explanation for those results. So for now, we've just described the experiment where light supplies energy, the electrons absorb the energy, um, and they can escape if they have enough. The energy equation we have is negative phi because we're in a, trapped in an energy well. right? We need to gain energy to escape. We get that energy from the light, and that contributes to the kinetic energy. If we have more light energy, then our kinetic energy is going to be even more. If we don't have enough light energy, we don't have enough energy to escape from the well. That uh, symbol phi is the work function. It's an unfortunate name because it's not work or it's a function either. It's, it's kind of a constant. So sodium has its own value for that. Um, magnesium will have its own value for that. Every metal will have its own value.